to continue our session and uh, our first presentation will be about maybe how to search with structure complexity control. And our first speaker uh, will be Konstantin Yakovlev from Moscow Polytechnical Institute, Russia. So you're welcome, Konstantin. Please. Uh, so hello everyone, my name is Konstantin Yakovlev. And the topic of our work is neural architecture search with structure complexity control. The purpose of our research is to propose a method for searching for an architecture of a deep learning model with control of its complexity. The problem is that deep learning models have an excessive number of parameters. Uh, therefore, using algorithms which search uh, an architecture on a discrete set is computationally challenging. The basic algorithm is DARS, differentiable architecture search. Uh, instead of using constant structural parameters, we redefine them as a function depending on the complexity parameter. Uh, here is a bibliography. In the first paper, DAS uh, was introduced. Um, in the second paper, hypernetworks were introduced. In the third paper, hypernetwork uh, was used to control the complexity of, of a model. And uh, in the last paper, Gumball softmax distribution uh, was introduced. Uh, let's consider an approach proposed in DARS. Uh, the cell is presented as a directed graph. Uh, in this graph, uh, edges go from nodes with smaller numbers to, uh, to nodes with uh, large numbers. The value in the intermediate node can be computed through the previous one as follows. Uh, let alpha be a vector of structural parameters. Uh, instead of using discrete optimization problem, namely the problem of choosing uh, the operations between nodes, uh, we solve a relaxed uh, problem. Uh, to do that, we introduce a mixed operation. This is a linear combination. Uh, this is a linear combination of all available operations. Uh, weights uh, in this linear combination uh, are controlled by structural, par structural parameters. Uh, let's define uh, an architecture search problem. First, split the data set into train invalidation, given also uh, loss functions on them. Uh, let alpha be the vector of uh, concatenation of all structural parameters. Uh, let w be the vector of model parameters. Uh, in order to find optimal vector al alpha, uh, we have to solve uh, the following uh, two-level optimization problem. Uh, on the first level, we find optimal uh, mo model parameters, and, and on the second level, we find the optimal structural parameters given uh, found optimal model parameters. Now, let's consider Gumball softmax distribution. In our work, we use Gumball softmax distribution for sampling nonlinear operations. Uh, this technique gives us uh, the relaxed architecture very close to the target discrete one. Uh, the Gumball softmax distribution is defined on a simplex. It depends on two parameters, the parameter of concentration alpha and the parameter of temperature T, where T and uh, all components of vector alpha are positive. This distribution has the property that when temperature uh, tends to zero, the distribution concentrates on the vertices of the simplex. At the same time, when temperature is rather high, the distribution concentrates in the center of the simplex. Uh, let's introduce DARTS CC, DARTS with complexity control. In our work, structural parameters are taken from Gumball of Max distribution. Thus, uh, mixed operation can be written in the following form. We define an architecture complexity as an amount of parameters, as an amount of parameters that the corresponding model has. Uh, therefore, we can modify a uh, loss function on the validation data set. Uh, we add a regularizer. Uh, here, vector gamma is a vector of concatenation of all structural parameters. Vector G is a vector of all available operations for uh, each edge. Vector N consists of uh, numbers of uh, numbers of parameters for each operation. Lambda is a regularization coefficient. Uh, let's introduce a hypernetwork concept. Let lambda be a set of regularization parameters. A, hyper a hypernetwork is a parametric mapping from set lambda to the set of model structural parameters. Uh, we use uh, hypernetwork uh, to control the complexity of uh, our architecture. Uh, instead of using fixed structural parameters, we redefine them as a hypernetwork. Here, A is a hypernetwork parameters. In our work, we exploit a piecewise linear 
hyper network. Here's the comparison of two approaches, that's on the left and proposed method on the right. The difference is that structural parameters are taken from gamma softmax distribution. In addition, uh, parameter of concentration uh, is generated by a hyper network depending on uh, regularization coefficient. Let's formulate an optimization problem. Uh, given a predefined distribution on lambda, let gamma be a concatenation of all structural parameters. Let A be a concatenation of all parameters of a hyper networks. In order to find uh, optimal parameters of a hyper network, uh, we solve the following two level optimization problem. The difference between the previous optimization problem is that we added uh, averaging by lambda and averaging by structural parameters. In addition, on the second level, we added a regularizer. Uh, the following theorem says that we, when temperature tends to zero, we get an optimization problem close to the discrete one. Uh, all we need is just uh, loss functional validation be continuous by gamma for all uh, vectors of model parameters. Here's the uh, optimization algorithms for uh, proposed method uh, on the left and DARS on the right. The difference is that at each, at each iteration, we sample lambda from proposed distribution and sample structural parameters from Gamble's of max distribution. Uh, let's uh, consider computational experiment setup. The purpose of the computational experiment is to analyze the proposed method efficiency for the neural architecture search task. Uh, both experiments uh, were conduct conducted on Fashion MNIST and Cypher 10 dataset. First of all, let's consider a small scale setup. Uh, we ran a, a search for an architecture consisting uh, of three cells. Uh, we took a logarithm of lambda uh, from a uniform distribution from, uh, for both data sets. Then we compare the results with darts and the random architectures. So now let's uh, consider a large scale setup. We, not, we, run, we ran an architecture search on Cypher 10 dataset uh, using model with eight cells. After that, we uh, retrained a model from scratch consisting of uh, 20 cells. We also took a logarithm of lambda from uniform distribution. Uh, after that, we compared the obtained results with existing methods. Uh, here is the results. Uh, here is the results for small scale setup. Uh, as we can see from this plot, uh, the proposed method uh, allows us uh, to control the complexity of, a, of an architecture, calibrating regularization parameter. Uh, here are presented uh, cells obtained in large scale setup. Uh, here are presented cells obtained for uh, maximal lambda and minimal lambda. Uh, as we can see, when lambda is maximal, uh, we observe that uh, mm, poolings are selected as operations which don't have parameters. Also, color of each node represents uh, the total number of parameters of incoming edges. Uh, as we can see, the greater the regularization coefficient, the simpler the resulting architecture. Here is a comparison with existing methods in a large scale setup. Uh, the, the conclusion is that the proposed methods achieved a comparable performance to other methods. In conclusion, uh, the proposed method, method allows us to control the trade off between model complexity and model performance. In addition, the method has the property that calibrating uh, regularization coefficient, uh, we may um, control the complexity of, of an architecture without additional training. Finally, the results show that the method is comparable to other methods. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. It was a nice short presentation and for the time for questions. So, dear colleagues, you're welcome to ask your questions. Алло. Алло. Можно сказать? Алло. А, Эдуард Владимирович, конечно, пожалуйста. What means that your method is comparable to darts? Mm -hmm. What uh, this means? Actually, this means that we uh, get uh, an accuracy on... Sorry. Actually, this means that we get an accuracy on validation dataset comparable to 
accuracy obtained in other methods. Mm. As we can see from this table. Mm -hmm. Is is uh -huh. uh, what is approximability of your method? It is uh, exact or approximation. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't catch the, the question. What 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 did you mean by saying ap approximation? Well, is your method is exact, optimal, approximation? Approximate. Uh, it means it seems for me uh, the presenter could not uh, answer your question because. In machine learning, uh, they did not know, do, do not know exact solutions. They they cannot compare with exact methods because um, they are absent. So all the algorithms are just heuristic, including this. Uh, on the other hand, this uh, second column in this table, accuracy, uh, shows Please, Constantine, explain us what is this column shows. Uh, answering this question, I meant that uh, the accuracy is comparable to accuracy obtained uh, in uh, other algorithms. Okay. Um, some words about the computation of uh, this accuracy measure towards accuracy. In addition, it, uh, from the third column, we can see that the number of parameters is significantly uh, low than, for example, uh, uh, amount of parameters of the methods uh, in, the, uh, in the first three lines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions, please. Okay, it seems to me there are no, uh, no other questions. So, thank you again. Thank you. And uh, we have three minutes before the next presentation. Okay, and uh, the next uh, report, the next paper will be on several HD joint MSTs with given diameter in the indirect graph with exponentially distributed H weights by Professor Eduard Ferdinand Kimadi, Alexander Stepper, and Alexander Shevekov. Eduard Ferdinand, uh, are you a speaker? Yeah, Alexander Shevekov. Ah, Alexander will be speaking. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Alexander, uh, you can start when you will be ready. Yeah, actually, I'm uh, okay. already here. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, hello everyone, good morning, good evening, depends on where you are. Uh, I'd like to present uh, uh, my work, uh, what was written with my uh, science tutor, Eduard Ferdinand Dimadi, and uh, my colleague, Alexander Schiff. I spoke on several edge uh, design MSCs with given diameter in direct graph with exponential distributed edge weight. Uh, it's uh, mm, Modification of uh, well-known uh, problem of minimum spinning speed problem. Uh, as, uh, uh, you may know this problem is uh, uh, well explored. Uh, there are uh, polynomial uh, algorithms for solving uh, the problem that was uh, proposed in the middle of uh, the last uh, century. Uh, here we just uh, want to give one more definition that uh, for us, diameter of the tree is uh, the maximum number of edges uh, within the tree connecting a pair of bits. Uh, so, uh, uh, let us uh, uh, give you uh, what our problem is. Uh, uh, we have a complete weighted and vertex, uh, and vertices and uh, positive digits, uh, MAD, uh, such that uh, this uh, inequality is uh, correct. And uh, uh, here, uh, M is the number of trees, and uh, D is uh, their diameter. Uh, 
and our goal is to find M edge disjoint uh, tree uh, on that graph for uh, such that each tree uh, has a given diameter G. Uh, and uh, D is a function from M. It's uh, kind of, in yeah, uh, D is an input uh, that depends on the uh, number of uh, vertices. And our goal is uh, to minimize uh, the total weight of uh, this tree. Uh, in our last uh, work, uh, uh, which was presented on uh, Conference Motor 2021, uh, we solved the problem. Uh, uh, in uh, we proposed uh, an algorithm solving this problem, and uh, we proved it uh, uh, asymptotically um, asymptotically optimal uh, asymptotical optimality uh, in case uh, where edges of uh, graph is uh, uh, is uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, in the extent, uh, have, have a, a distribution has a uniformly uh, uniform distribution, and it's uh, independent random variables that have a, a uniform distribution. In that work, uh, uh, we consider uh, a distribution with uh, infinite core. And to be more specific, uh, uh, we will consider uh, uh, the problem if uh, weight of edges are, uh, have a biased exponential distribution. And uh, we will prove and show uh, its um, uh, asymptotically op optimality as well. Uh, firstly, uh, let me introduce to you the algorithm. Uh, here we use the same algorithm that we use for uh, in our last talk. Uh, on the preliminary step zero, uh, uh, we choose uh, uh, we choose vertices uh, which will uh, mm, I'll say uh, vertices on uh, that uh, uh, we have uh, our diameter D. I mean mm, we have M set of vertices with d plus one uh, number of the vertices uh, to reach uh, uh, the correct diameter of a d. Uh, more, more specific, uh, we just choose uh, vertices that, uh, are, that are included in, uh, uh, in uh, that set. And after we divide all remaining on m equal uh, uh, on the first uh, uh, step, uh, uh, we construct uh, a Hamiltonian set uh, in each vertex uh, using the rule go to the nearest and visited vertex. Uh, and on the second step, it's uh, tricky one. Uh, wh what is very important that uh, uh, we consider undirected graph. Uh, so, uh, so this algorithm uh, has to um, save uh, uh, independence of uh, random variables we choose. So that's why on this step uh, uh, we divide each path on two halves and uh, uh, connect uh, uh, vertices between each pair of uh, this set, each pair of uh, sets, and do it uh, like this. Uh, uh, we choose uh, the nearest one from the second half. Mm, I mean, uh, we choose uh, uh, this vertices, uh, uh, connect each inner vertices uh, of the first half of the part C, I, by the sort of set to the inner vertices of the first half of the part CG, uh, like this. Uh, then we go to the second uh, half, uh, connect uh, uh, like this, and uh, uh, for the next step, uh, constructing uh, uh, the next tree, uh, 
we uh, go like this. Uh, sorry, I forgot the term in English. Uh, like this. Uh, here you may just have a look on uh, uh, formal description how we do this. And on the step three, we just uh, put all other vectors to our uh, sheets like this to and go, go to the sort of one. Uh, to the what's important, we do it uh, for the inner vertices. Uh, we do not uh, attach any new vertices to that one in order not to uh, make uh, diameter higher. And uh, this algorithm works uh, with complexity uh, n squared where n is number of edges. So now we perform the probabilistic analysis under conditions that weights of graph edges and dependent random variables uh, would have uh, uh, biased uh, exponential uh, distribution uh, like this with the parameter lambda n and alpha n. Uh, here just to uh, remind uh, our notation. Uh, we denote uh, uh, like this uh, the solution that uh, we bring by algorithm and like this uh, uh, optimal solution. Uh, when we just put uh, this inequality where uh, epsilon is an estimation of the relative error and uh, uh, delta is an estimation of failure probability. Uh, and if we uh, can find uh, uh, this uh, relative uh, error such that it will uh, such that for the for epsilon n data n will go to the zero as well as epsilon n with n uh, goes to infinity. We say that approximation algorithm A is called asymptotically optimal, and uh, uh, in this, and further. Uh, we prove asymptotically optimal uh, of our algorithm for the class of graph with the uh, 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 exponential distribution weight. Mm. Uh, here we have uh, to do it. Uh, uh, we uh, have a notation. We introduce a new random variable zeta. Uh, we just uh, move our initial. Uh, shift our initial uh, distribution and uh, 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 hmm, uh, and uh, divide it on uh, lambda. Uh, we do it in order to work with uh, uh, easier uh, distribution. Uh, that's a classical uh, exponential distribution with the constant one. So uh, next we just uh, consider uh, the weight of uh, trees that we receive on the first, second, and uh, third steps. Uh, uh, we bounded it uh, through um, uh, the same weight, but uh, uh, for distribution uh, zeta. And uh, here we have uh, this estimation, and uh, further we will work with. Uh, uh, with the distribution, this part distribution exponential. And uh, uh, we here prove for some lemma. Uh, we bound uh, uh, mathematical estimation of uh, WA uh, with the uh, three. And uh, which is the most important lemma, uh, uh, we introduce uh, uh, new. Uh, variable like this and uh, uh, omega n uh, which is the uh, upper one zero and we introduce this quality where uh, uh, this one is some upper bound for expectation mathematical expectation and uh, we prove that uh, uh, epsilon n uh, could be written like this, and for this epsilon, we will have uh, next uh, further data. And uh, what is very important for our work, but uh, uh, what we use the cross area, because uh, as you may see uh, here, uh, 
we have to work with uh, uh, some of uh, and of independent random variables. And the iterative steering uh, allows to work with it. Uh, actually, if you will see that, uh, it could, we have epsilon sticking there and we have delta sticking there. And based on the theorem, uh, we need to uh, find uh, constant C and H1, Hn, uh, such that uh, mm, the condition of the theorem theorems uh, would be applicable uh, for us. And uh, in next lemmas, we just uh, consider, uh, we just find this constant. And uh, lemma three uh, uh, tells us about the mathematical expectation. Uh, in lemma four, we find C, big C, and HK like this, as you may see. And the lemma five, uh, we found uh, the constant H, uh, big H uh, for this theorem. And after that, using this theorem, uh, the proof theorem and this uh, lemma, uh, we prove our main theorem, uh, theorem one. Uh, and the main result, uh, what our algorithm is asymptotically, asymptotically optimal in case if uh, parameters of distribution uh, like this, I mean, uh, uh, relativity between these parameters like this. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, uh, we proved that uh, our method uh, can work for uh, infinite distribution uh, like exponential and uh, that we can apply this method in the future. And uh, our next step uh, uh, for searching to this problem is the first one is to solve the same problem but for discrete distribution. And uh, the second way of uh, search investigation to investigate the symptomatic optimality of the problem of finding several adjacent standing keys with a given or bounded diameter using an algorithm field without representing the Hamiltonian path in two forms. Of the California health. Uh, just to remind you, here we use it uh, to save uh, independence of our random variable. So, uh, thank you, thanks for your attention, uh, and I'll be glad to hear your questions if you have any. Thank you very much. Very nice presentation. Uh, so, I would like to, to, to tell some, some words about uh, uh, this work. Uh, as I know, um, it continues a long story uh, of um, investigation uh, of asymptotically optimal algorithms by um, um, Professor Dimadi and his group. And uh, this um, direction in combinatorial optimization appears to be very close to uh, the well-known path learning theory by Laszlo Valiant and Robert Shapire. Uh, which is one of the fundamental um, uh, fundamentals of the modern uh, uh, machine learning. So I'm sorry. Uh, now please your questions. Uh, so uh, I didn't understand your question properly. Uh, could, could you please uh, uh, elaborate what your question is? It, it it is not a question. It's just. Ah, it's just it's, about a okay. um, short remark about history of uh, your work. Uh, this work, I like it very, uh, very, very much. Uh, so I would like to tell some words about it. So, dear colleagues, would you like uh, to add some some things? Uh, okay, uh, then I have uh, one question. Um, as I know, uh, for us, uh, problems where uh, asymptotically optimal um, algorithms uh, managed to be established, um, to design, uh, it is um, it can it can be proven for uh, many classes of um, distributions uh, for exponential, for uh, normal, or for some something else, Gaussian, and so on. Uh, so, what about your plans for the future uh, in accordance to this problem? Uh, 
Uh, the first one is uh, to investigate uh, one more type. Uh, it's the uh, disket distribution mm -hmm. because uh, we already uh, explored uh, for the case of uh, Unifor. Mm -hmm. Now we uh, investigated that we can use apply this method for a distribution with uh, infinite core, like exponential distribution. Mm -hmm. And now we want to do discrete distribution. And uh, maybe after that, uh, to generalize, because uh, yeah. uh, maybe we can work not with only uh, one family, but maybe we can group some sets of uh, uh, distributions, uh, mm -hmm. different class of distributions, mm -hmm. not for example, exponential and directed, etc., in one and have results oh, for, for them in general. Yeah, mm -hmm. and also uh, uh, another way uh, we want to uh, work with algorithms without uh, representing the Hamilton Stonian test in the form of corresponding mm -hmm. health. Mm -hmm. uh, now we do it to because uh, our method works. Uh, for case of independent random variable. Mm -hmm. So we need, uh, we want uh, to solve this problem and uh, not to do this, but uh, uh, to prove uh, that, uh, that mm -hmm. we can use this method uh, for more, for easier algorithms. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very, very interesting. Work. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Me too. Okay. And so our final presentation in this session uh, will be uh, given by uh, Mikhail Bogatyrov, Dmitry Arlov, and Tatiana Shestaka. Sorry. Uh, and the title will be on the Pareto optimal solutions in the multimodal clustering program. So. Yes. Good <clears throat> afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh -huh. Okay. Please share your screen. Yes, we can see you, but but not your slides. Okay, nice. Yes. You're welcome. Please. Can you see my presentation? Yes, you can see. Oh, thank you very much. Good afternoon again, dear colleagues. I am presenting our work about Pareto optimal solutions in the multimodal clustering. And because of the short time allotted for the report, uh, I will present only the very essence of the proposed approach and show the most typical results. I also omit mathematical nature of the Pareto optimal solutions uh, due to that um, cause. All details, references to literature, uh, etc., et can be found in the article. We will consider uh, the following sections in our work. They include some topics from multimodal clustering, evolutionary computation, and the results of implementing these tools on real data. Uh, the motivation of our work is the following. Um, the problem of multimodal clustering arises when it's necessary to cluster several sets of objects simultaneously, not uh, clustering on one set. So the first, uh, when clustering is performed on multiple sets, there may be multiple proximity measures of objects from those sets. And this is especially true for heterogeneous data presented in such sets and which this is makes the use of multi-object parameterization in demand. Second, uh, the evolutionary approach to clustering is based on evolutionary computation and this is a collection of algorithms for solving global optimization problems that use evolution of several solutions at every step of the optimization process. So this is a natural way for uh, having Pareto optimal solution. And 
also having several solutions of clustering is important for interpreting clusters, especially for clustering textual data. Multi-model clustering problem can be formulated on so-called formal contexts. Formal context is n-dimensional tensor together with certain relation which often is binary. And multimodal cluster on the context is an n-dimensional subset with the following properties of closure. Uh, they means that uh, self-sufficiency of a cluster can, uh, and uh, a cluster cannot be enlarged without violating of the property number three. This is a simple example of formal context. Formal context has objects, the set of objects and uh, the set of attributes and they uh, link it by certain relation, sometimes and more often it's binary relation, which uh, is represented by uh, process in the um, seals of the matrix uh, relation. And then a formal concept can be transformed to conceptual lattice by using or finding or acquiring so-called um, formal concepts. Again, formal context, the second formal concept, and the third conceptual lattice. Conceptual lattice is uh, a conceptual model which is very useful in data analysis. Uh, it represents the hierarchy of data represented by um, a formal concept, concept uh, context, and uh, we can find on the conceptual lattice um, more or less general uh, concepts and uh, concepts similar to one to other, each other, etc. So this model is widely, not very wide, but uh, increasingly wide, uh, is implemented now in many applications, especially in data analysis, in medicine, in linguistics uh, and uh, in social networks because sometimes we can realize uh, a network for example social network as a conceptual lattice and there are many works uh, devoting devoid this uh, area uh, they can be found uh, the references of the paper next uh, the problem uh, which is in this uh, area uh, is the following. Sometimes formal concept is not convenient, uh, the set of formal concept, concepts is not convenient for real um, problems uh, because uh, every uh, algorithm of acquiring formal concepts from, from formal context uh, will produce a huge amount of formal concepts and uh, some of them are, and many of them are trivial. Instead of using formal concepts, uh, they use um, clusters uh, and uh, these clusters are uh, multimodal in, in the general case. Uh, but uh, formal concept analysis uh, started uh, with analyzing B clustering and tree clustering problem and multimodal clustering is the generalization of the formal concept analysis now. Uh, so cluster volume, cluster density, coverage and diversity are corresponding characteristics of clusters which um, must be uh, calculated uh, in during um, any uh, process of acquiring uh, clustering. So uh, evolutionary approach to uh, FCA in the FCA is a new direction and it is based on evolutionary computation. The history of evolutionary computation is pretty long now because the first evolutionary algorithm named as genetic algorithm uh, appeared uh, in 1970s 
and uh, it was uh, similar to aphoria about these algorithms, which replaced by uh, the serious criticism uh, on them. Uh, the situation, uh, I think, is similar to the neural networks uh, today. Uh, there are many um, adepts of neural networks and this area is uh, widely uh, replicable and uh, also some critics of neural ne networks also exist. So as for uh, evolutionary computation, but now uh, it uh, settled its own place in the modern uh, optimization uh, as uh, the set of algorithms of uh, random controllable search. Uh, they can be named so uh, because they use random uh, model of, uh, which is biologically inspired. Uh, they use chromosomes, genes, and population, and uh, random manipulation of the parameters of these uh, objects. Uh, also, evolutionary computation, computation can be represented as black box model, and the model with feedback. Uh, where feedback is realized by optimizer and genetic or another evolutionary algorithm uh, plays the role of optimizer here. And criteria evaluated is very important part of this scheme. Uh, criteria is named as fitness function and uh, mostly uh, evolutionary computation uh, is applied in the parametric optimization problems. The, here, the classical genetic algorithm is illustrated, as I mentioned, it has uh, biologically inspired elements as gene, chromosome, alphabet, uh, mostly binary, but not uh, binary, uh, strictly binary. Uh, and uh, many genetic algorithms uh, are known today uh, and this direction is uh, still um, progressing uh, and present um, new uh, solutions with these algorithms. Uh, the very important and may I say crucial problem here is uh, encoding scheme. Uh, every chromosome uh, is representing the solution and for clustering we need to encode uh, clustering solution also. Uh, there are some variants of uh, encoding chromosomes as binary or not binary strings and uh, we proposed some time ago our own encoding scheme which is um, effective in um, optimizing, uh, finding optimum functions uh, with Euclidean distance, but in non-Euclidean uh, distances uh, of optimizing opti function to be function to be optimized, another chromosome encoding is more interesting, and in the clustering problem, uh, very simple and very convenient. Uh, encoding is the following, when every string uh, encodes uh, one cluster. So one chromosome, one cluster is the preferable way of encoding in uh, clustering. Uh, here, every object on its place has unit if it belongs to the cluster. So for n clustered objects, we have chromosomes uh, of n elements and positions. We worked on two data sets. Uh, the first data set is from medicine and it represents myocardial infarction, infarction complications. Uh, this is uh, data 
base and uh, several formal contexts, uh, two-dimensional preferably, may be constructed from this database. We had artificially created uh, th three-dimensional uh, formal context uh, where special uh, uh, scale, time scale of days of therapy uh, was applied. Uh, and uh, this data set is interesting for um, exploring uh, some medical um, circumstances of data. Uh, and uh, we had some problems here uh, connected with absence, uh, the example to compare our solutions with other solutions. The second data set, counterwise, is more convenient from this sense because here we uh, have uh, solutions. Uh, Found previously by using formal concept analysis. I'm and, sorry, uh, we, unfortunately, we have only one minute. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I see. Um, and I am near to the finish. <laughs> uh, it has uh, 30 objects, uh, seven attributes, and conditions, and it uh, represents uh, some crimes from American teenagers and uh, we can compare our results with uh, formal concepts uh, acquired from this formal context by formal concept analysis algorithms. Uh, for example, by a very famous data pillar algorithm. Um, this is Pareto optimal uh, solution, uh, the example of the solution which demonstrates uh, very uh, fast uh, variant of algorithm, which has only four generation uh, to achieve the Pareto front. And we use uh, special visualization, two-dimensional visualization for two criteria. Uh, here is the Pareto front for juvenile crime set. Uh, it has 16 equivalent clusters uh, from 40 chromosomes, and we export the borders of it. Uh, one, one borders have uh, density of uh, high density and in the, to the right of the Pareto front. And uh, the sense of this uh, example is that uh, males, 70, 70, 17 years males in the USA, uh, had criminal uh, offenses uh, during this year and uh, the set of these offenses is, is very uh, large. Uh, the second cluster is on the left. It has uh, small density and uh, it is about involving 14, 14 years uh, girls to crimes uh, with other teenagers. Uh, our um, um, aim was, uh, our general aim is uh, to fact extraction from data. So we are interested on clustering as an instrument to uh, acquiring facts from uh, the results. So uh, we need to analyze additionally every cluster. And now we analyze them handily. And in future, we need to create special tools for analyzing them. And uh, the average is the characteristic of lability. It is connected with the known problems of Pareto opti optimal solutions when we uh, need to know is the Pareto front local or global and calculating coverage we can orient in the search space and estimate the globality of the Pareto front. Uh, conclusion. Um, 
uh, I've mentioned that we need uh, special uh, tools for um, analyzing the meanings. And, but uh, using Pareto optimal solution, we get equivalent clusters. And this um, feature of equivalence is very useful, especially for analyzing textual data, where, where equivalence may mean as uh, the similar semantics. Equivalent cluster may represent semantically similar data if then them are acquired from textual data. This is very interesting uh, direction of our future research. And this is our future plan. And as my time is over, thank you for your attention. I'm be glad to answer the questions. Thank you. Th thank you, thank you very much. Very, very interesting presentation. Um, I think uh, there are many questions. Uh, but uh, now we, we should uh, give the, the hope to the other session. So I'm um, sorry. And um, now uh, well, our session is closed. Thank you very much. Very, very interesting, interesting presentation, interesting result. Thank you. Thanks a lot.
started on the slide. Again, you have Chesky and uh, uh, other colleagues uh, from Perm. So please, uh, the stage is yours. Okay, thanks. So do you see my presentation? Yes. Yes, thank you. We can see. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, the colleagues. Uh, I will apologize for my English. Uh, my name is Evgeny Rybczewski. I am uh, head of a sales lab company. The name corresponds to abbreviation uh, search engine using semantics. This is my second uh, participation in ICE conference. Uh, the first took place uh, eight years ago, 2013, in Russia, in Yekaterinburg. And uh, at uh, that time, our company um, was just starting to enter the market of intelligent data processing from social networks. And uh, now our software is used by government agencies in many regions of Russia and uh, process uh, several hundred millions units of content per day. I would like to present to you the results of our team's work and uh, part of PhD work of my colleague, Andrei Grabczewski. Uh, my talk is about the analysis of dissemination of information in social network. And uh, in particular, the influence of a special kind of users, like bridges, on increasing uh, the audience involved with social media users. Our analytical center and the dissemination of information in social network on several uh, high profile news stories that uh, took place in the Commonwealth of Independent States, countries were the three past years. And uh, we analyzed the network of the users that were involved in the distribution of content for the same topic. Uh, we decided to build a graph of users for two ages. So uh, for a collection of uh, 10,000 authors, we had uh, to process uh, 10 of billions of links. Uh, it's order, but not uh, exact number. And uh, we, find, uh, we found some kind of uh, Uh, the figure show uh, a typical network structure. Uh, the call uh, indicate the publication activity of users. Uh, strong activity uh, is red, uh, medium activity is yellow, and gray is a lack of activity. Uh, as we can see, the structures contain a large number of cluster of nodes located at the periphery. Uh, which are connected to the kernel through one specific user uh, whom we will call a bridge. The peculiarity of the bridge is uh, that the cluster nodes are connected to the kernel only though the bridge and are not connected to each other. Our attention was at bridges, which are marked in a gray color. That is, they themselves don't publish anything, but at the same time, significantly expand the audience of the users involved in the dissemination of, of information. Of particular interest to them is the fact that it is impossible to identify them only by publish, uh, publication activity. Uh, social network and, uh, node that satisfies the following requirements was considered a bridge. Uh, first, a node that contains, uh, connects to the cluster to the core of the network. network. Second, uh, the cluster nodes 
uh, are only connected to the bridge and not connected to each other. And the third uh, bridge is connected to cluster nodes uh, and core node. In graph uh, theories, these nodes are usually called uh, articulation node, uh, cut node, or broker. Uh, but we'll use uh, other concept, original concept, it's a bridge uh, for uh, ease of reference. Uh, we needed to assess the impact of bridges of the dissemination of information. The physical meaning of the network location of the bridges. Therefore, we have proposed an original metric that uh, we name uh, uh, weighted contribution centrality. Its meaning corresponds to the contribution of uh, the publication activity of the all nodes of cluster for corresponding bridge. It's uh, important that uh, clusters uh, of a small number of the most influ influential uh, bridges can connect uh, the bulk of uh, most of publications. Uh, the mathematical model for assessing the centrality metric based on the weighted contribution is presented on the slide. And you can see uh, seriously in the paper. Uh, uh, we compared the use of these metrics to assess the degree of decrease in publication activity when exposed to bridges. Uh, the results show uh, that using the weighted contribution centrality metric has the greatest value by contribution from the graph and so how the weight of the graph and the weight of the clusters would be changed. Uh, this table shows the results of the centrality comparison by weighted contribution with the close of metrics. Uh, in conclusion, uh, a feature of the centrality measure by weighted contribution is that uh, it clearly determines uh, whether a node is a bridge uh, in the network configurations described at area. Uh, bridge, uh, bridges help to expand the size of the network, increase the number of users involved in the social phenomenon, and increase the overall level of social network activity. Uh, Blocking the most influential uh, bridges can significantly change the characteristics of the entire network and uh, reduce the overall level of social network activity in a given uh, social phenomenon. Thus, uh, impacting of the most influential bridges is an effective way to reduce social network activity. And now we are working to implement this work at the, our sales lab software. I finish and uh, ready to answer the questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your talk. And now uh, it's time for questions. You are welcome, please. So, if we have no questions from participants, I would like to ask one of the questions. Uh, so the bridges are extremely important in social network applications for all identification problems. Are you, um, are you planning uh, um, to extend your technique and apply it in other domains? For example, in information retrieval uh, bridges, in terms of uh, citations, like offers are also important to, to bridge communities. 
so maybe you can uh, you can talk us a bit about future applications of your technique. Okay. Uh, our software, uh, sales, uh, sales lab, it's a uh, software for information retrieval uh, for data from social network. And uh, first application, it's uh, identified bridges in social network. Uh, maybe we we can uh, maybe we will uh, use this uh, approach for analyzing uh, citation network. Maybe in our uh, in our domain uh, for information security. Maybe. Uh huh. Thank you very much. Those uh, different set of applications is also uh, extremely important to promote your tool uh, through different communities, because sometimes people are not well informed that the same tool can be applied uh, in in security networks, so to speak. Uh, at the same time for social network analysis and at the same time for uh, citation network analysis. So, so I believe that it might be a good component uh, for, for your tool to advertise such different cases, maybe to add case studies on the website. So I, I like your talk and I like your tool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, if we have questions, if we have more questions, we can ask the speaker now. If not, uh, we can move, move on. Okay, thank you. Let me show my screen. Okay, could you please confirm that you are able to see my screen? Yes, yes, we can see your screen. And uh, according to, to the schedule, this is the next talk on agent-based model for estimation of collective emotions in social networks and the talk is prepared by Kirill Polivoda, Anatoly Surikov and Dmitry Tsaryov. Uh, so K Kirill, uh, you are welcome to start. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So good afternoon everyone. My name is Kirill Polivoda and today I with my colleagues uh, Dmitry Tsaryov and Anatoly Surikov want to present you our agent-based uh, model for estimation of collective emotions in social networks. So agenda for today will be organized as following. Uh, the first part is introduction, then relevance of our model. Um, the next part is model description, uh, simulation result, and a few, a few words in conclusion. So emotion spreading in uh, online communities has drawn attention to of social science for decades. An actual problem in this area is estimating uh, collective emotions in social networks, such as Twitter, Facebook, Weibo, and so on. People chat on community walls, exchanging messages, transmitting and receiving emotions. Uh, we describe these emotions in terms of Ekman's uh, six emotion model uh, that contains joy, sadness, surprise, anger, fear, and dis disgust emotions. Uh, we measure the sum of all messages, make an emotion field or collective emotions, which we actually aim to measure. Uh, we propose an agent-based model. Uh, we generate a number of agents that simulate uh, human perception of emotions. As the agents monitor the community, or read, uh, read actually the posts and comments on the wall, estimate the emotions of each read text, uh, and taking into account not only the words, but the emojis and emoticons as well. Uh, then every agent makes a prediction for collective emotion of the community in the moment of time. 
uh, signs the agents differ by their parameters, the average value of their estimations represents such as an ob objective measure of the emotions field as it perceived by users. Uh, for the emotion estimation in a particular text, agents use a simple sentiment analysis based on emo emo emotional dictionary. Uh, information spreading in social network is one of the actual topic in modern computer and social science, providing fast communications of large groups of people. Social networks intensively affect the spread of opinions, rumors, consumer preferences, and so on. Especially the dynamic of emotion trans trans transition between uh, the user attracts the attention of scientists all around the world. The results of such studies may be applied in marketing, political, and social sciences. Uh, one special form of communication social networks is chatting on communities' walls, like uh, communities' walls on social network contacts, or maybe fa Facebook. Uh, when many users post messages publicly, it's impossible for a person to read all of them. In this case, when user responds to some post, no one can tell uh, which messages have affected his opinion and mood. Uh, for researchers studying the emotional dynamics in the social network, this situation evokes some difficulties. A possible solution is to consider an emotional field or some collective emotions in the community, somehow averaging all uh, the user em emotions. However, a direct averaging is not the best option, as known the emotion perception is subjective and this must be, this must be taken into account. And moreover, as was pointed before, a rare user reads uh, all of the posts on the wall, which contradicts the idea of, of direct averaging. So first of all, let's uh, think about how we can recognize emotions. Uh, we recognize emotions via digital footprints, like messages that user left uh, in community, for example, on Twitter, or his comments in the community wall, for example, on contact. And so we apply the next approach. So we perform expert markup of these messages. Then with uh, NLP neural networks, we perform a classification of this text by Ekman's model of the emotions. Here you can see our natural, natural, natural network architecture. So we uh, perform uh, simple TFID vectorization, uh, uh, train our network with full connected layers and predict uh, class uh, probabilities for each of the six emotions for each text. Uh, and then we uh, create emotional dictionary, dictionary. So for example, we match for every word in in this uh, model, uh, the six uh, dimensional vector that represents presence or absence uh, some of particular emotion in this word. So example, you can see here. <clears throat> Emotions can actually be transformed. Uh, so it's intensity, severity, brightness, and direction can change. And we can uh, see at emotion dynamics, uh, like user emotion dynamics and community dynamics that we're uh, talking right now. So for each word, uh, as it was shown before, we represent vector AG that represents uh, absence or presence of this of six emotions in particular word. Then we summarize in, uh, this uh, we summarize these vectors for uh, one text, uh, then we normalize it, and we, in the result we have like emotion, emotion vector for a particular text. Now let's have, take, a, take a look about our agent model architecture. So we have timeline and our agent. So it's like one agent. Agent has the following parameters. So first of all, he has a number of posts and comments to read. It's like the, uh, the maximum number that he, he can read in when he when it's activated. Inertia, inertia is parameter how uh, user remember his previous estimation of collective emotions. Susceptibility param uh, parameter that shows how agent react to some um, maybe high emotional. Uh, messages or how how can react to some maybe averaging of all uh, texts that he have read, uh, and attentiveness uh, represents um, uh, probability that users can skip some posts or skip some comments on the community wall. So, with uh, delta test step, 
we activate our agents in particular time and perform in this in, in the every step performs the next algorithm so first of all uh, agent reads post and comments and gives each text a score from zero to four to four uh, then he updates in standard as collective emotion values uh, according to formula one so here you can see his uh, susceptibility uh, that he react to some really em emotional uh, text and uh, every average of all text that he have read in this point of time. And after that, he updates his estimation of collective emotions according to, follow, to Formula 2. Uh, here you can see value alpha that describes his inert. Uh, so um, as the edges looks to his uh, recent value in, point, in previous point of his activation and current, current vector G, so and uh, after that, he performed his current estimation, estimated collective emotion value. And uh, in the end of simulation, we should uh, understand uh, collective emotion value for, for this particular community. And we understand it, but averaging <clears throat> all emotions for all of the, our agents in the model. Uh, to test this model, we conducted uh, online psychological experiments. So, we uh, actually made uh, expert markup for for text in two communities. First community is Tonki Humor, the, se the second community is Chess Many. Uh, and then we compare this uh, experts markup with the uh, uh, prediction of our agents. And uh, rock curves for each of the emotions shows uh, kind of good results uh, for almost all the emotions. Uh, area under the curve greater than uh, 0 0.7. And here you can see the difference between emotions is this uh, two, two communities. So the community just to many is socially significant uh, accumulating important information related to the life quality in the certain area, including some accident reports. Uh, on the other hand, the community talk humor is more entertaining, containing recreational content. Uh, thus, the emotional reaction of the users on the unpleasant content in these communities is different. So in the community, just to many, we see that uh, emotion, sad, fear, and surprise much greater than in community Tonki humor. However, in the community Tonki humor, emotions, joy, anger, and disgust uh, greater than in community just to, to many that can be described as um, it can demonstrate that we see not only the posts in this community but also in the comments and uh, it can be some maybe fighting arguing and so on and so forth and that's why we see that emotions and energy dis discussed much higher than in community cheese to me so to summarize uh, the strong point of this approach proposed is the uh, equipped the agent with subjectivity combined with the object, subjectivity combined with the objectivity provided with their amounts. Simulations user behavior, the agents provide an inside collective emotions estimation, allowing to see the community from the user's point of view. Uh, the model allows to simulate the features of real people, making the emotion assessments more accurate and more human-like. Uh, the model developed is to be used in the, our next uh, model where we try to predict and simulate the spread of emotions in social networks for uh, particular users. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you for, for your attention and I'm ready to answer to your questions. Uh, thank you, Kirill, for your talk. Now it's time for questions. So every participant may have a chance to ask questions. You don't need to wait my special approval. Just ask if you have something to ask, please. Okay. Uh, while uh, while the participants may ask something, uh, let me ask uh, several questions, or at least one the most important from my view. Uh, we have been talking about 
simulation of emotions, right? But um, do you think that uh, it looks somewhat controversial in the sense that if we have real people and uh, real emotions that they express when we have bullets or uh, agents, they may express uh, fake emotions because they are artificial agents and uh, they are like puppet masters in some wise hands. So can we, uh, can we detect such cases or maybe model such cases uh, when someone artificially tried to change the emotional environment upon certain uh, specific sensible topics? Uh, do can you, you comment on it? What do you mean? Maybe I, I actually don't understand the question. You mean bots that can write some messages on the wall or uh yeah 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 so ah uh, yeah we talk... when we yeah. when we perform actual modeling we delete this uh i guess i haven't showed it here but we delete these uh users in our um, data set that's actually has a repetitive uh, repetitive text and has a lot of activities in these communities so we just not look at this text when we perform our modeling Yeah, I believe that your tool uh, is, a, is a nice one and such modeling is a very good one to understand uh, processes in social networks. But maybe as a future research, you may uh, try to model uh, such artificial in invasion into some communities <laughs> when the intruders uh, put their own opinions, jokes, uh, how strong the community is, how stable it is to such an intrusion, the influence. It's a very interesting study, just because I can see on NLP uh, mm -hmm. sections that they study something like fake news, mm -hmm. news detection, and uh, I believe it's quite a trendy topic, or it might be one of the emerging topics there. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, thank you for your comment. Uh, do, do we have uh, more questions, comments, opinions? Uh, it seems not. Then thank you. Uh, thank you, Kirill, once again. Uh, and according to the schedule, as far as I can see, uh, this is the session. The session end. Am I right? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. So I wish you a good day, and please uh, visit us on Saturday if you are interested in um, in business studies, so to speak. Uh, there were there are several uh, there are several talks on Saturday. For example, one is about Toloka. Those who are from NLP, uh, they know this tool already very well because they label data, but it has much more impact, I believe, on other, on other domains where images uh, can be evaluated as well. And maybe some professionals needed to <clears throat> label such data. Maybe it might be even a good, good discussion there because such talks are usually less formal than ours in scientific sessions. Thank you very much one more time. Have a good day. Yes, thank Have a good day. Bye-bye, colleagues. Uh,